I worked on my, my craft. So when I would go out there, I would know that what I was saying was going to be an attention getter. And if it wasn't going to be that, I would never get in my mic in the first place. Hey, what's up? This is Sweet Tea. I started rhyming when I was in school. I had a friend named um, Double G, and she was writing rhymes. And I was like, and then she wrote me a rhyme. And then after that, I was like, wow, I could do that. You know? So then, you know, that started taking a place of schoolwork for a minute until my mother snapped me out of that one. I was, um, you know, in class writing rhymes because in the lunchroom, you know what I mean? I had to come up with something to be in a cipher and come up with something new to top what I said yesterday or the day before, you know, while people was um, beating on the tables and making beats in the lunchroom. So, I mean, you know, it kind of started from there. And Davey DMX asked me to come and record with him. So I went to his house and that's when I made my first song with him. You know, the record, um, One for the Treble. One for the trouble, two for the race. Come on, baby, be lost for this place, you know? So I went on a tour with him. Um, a few years later, I got with Herbie Lovebug, Herbie Azor. And um, that's when I made my first record, It's My Beat. I was signed to Profile. Did my first album, It's Tea Time. Put singles on it, I got the feeling. It's like that, y'all. Why did it have to be me? Just to think you were the man that I wanted to marry, to share my life, whose children I carry, what you chose to love and leave I see, but why did it have to be me? I saw Joyce at a party in the Bronx, and I had just recorded It's My Beat, and I was like, wow, that would be really hot to have a female DJ. I linked up with Joyce, went to her house, we threw some records on, and it was a wrap from there. Actually, It's My Beat, if you know you were, were to listen to the record, it has four verses. It had three. I went back into the studio and put a fourth verse on it with her name in it. And I made sure that I said Jazzy Joyce like a lot of times in the verse. Cause I said, wow, she needs something that she could cut. So when we would do our stage show, it'd be like Jazzy Joyce, Jazzy Joyce, whatever she could do. So I made that verse purposely for her to have something to work with when we would go through shows and I insisted that she you know be signed with me and that the record says Sweet Tea and Jazzy Joyce and her and I just we were we did so many shows we were just out there it was really hot when you know to see a girl DJ come out and she be cutting chicka there it is chicka there it is chicka there it is spin it around and do the whole piece and then you know do an intro piece and an intro, you know for me to come out and we, we was just real raw with it. We were raw with it. After that, I got signed to JMJ's record label. You know, peace to JMJ, Jam Master J. I put out the song, What's Up Star, um, which was on the soundtrack to the show. I saw you glancing, I peeped you from the door and on the floor when you was dancing. This is the pickup line, I got the big up mind, I'm stepping to you like a stick up. I don't have to drop on you, so let's go get a drink on the low and kick it in the corner. Went on tour with that for a while, and then the label folded, and um, and here I am now. If you don't truly have a love for something, there's nothing that anybody can do for you. I had a couple of raw deals, and it kind of like, it kind of like, sometimes it would just, you know, disturb me and make me be like, okay, you know, it's like when you love a dude and he don't love you back, you know, how many times you gonna keep letting him step on you before you go, okay. You know, so I got stepped on a few times, and rap just is just one dude that I don't want to let go. So, um, you know, I got over it and I'm gonna try again. Toes are tapping, hands are clapping, my DJ's on the 